Time now to dip into the Villa Vault for a classic win over Everton. We can turn the clock back to the 2005-2006 season. David O'Leary's third and last in charge. It had been a poor first half of the campaign, but things came right on Boxing Day as the home supporters were given plenty of Christmas cheer. Extended highlights now of Aston Villa versus Everton, the 26th of December 2005. Two sides who would love to be in healthier positions in the Premiership who kick off the this Boxing Day evening fixture. Both in positions which uh, they've not been that used to down the years. Towards that bottom three and in desperate need of points, Villa looking for only their third home win of the season. And after Everton's wonderful campaign last year, things just really haven't got going for them this. And four. Stephen Davis, part of Villa's Youth Cup winning side against Everton three years ago. In the heart of the Villa first team midfield now. It's Mikel Arteta. Today in 16th, Villa in 15th, both level on 17 points. And both, as it stands, four points above the drop zone. And Mikel Arteta winning the first free kick of the night. It's won there by Liam Ridgewell. Up to Barros, who won't get a particularly warm reception from the Everton supporters with his Liverpool connections. Everton, of course, coming into the game off a 4-0 battering at home to Bolton last weekend. Time's not good for the Merseysiders at the moment. Hibbert reached Tim Cahill uh, it's the sort of ball he does like to feed off the Australian he's uh, got a uh, real threat in the air makes great runs from deep but uh, like Everton he's not been at his best in this first half of the campaign and it has been like that really for David Moyes fourth from top last season fourth from bottom the season before it's been a real contrast in fortunes, a roller coaster ride, if you will. <laughs> toiling somewhat at the moment, having made the top six themselves a couple of seasons ago. That's McCann stepping in for Everton player. Finds Barry, chance to cross with four in the area. But, uh, unable to find any of them. Well, they were all waiting. Milner was in there, Moore was in there, Barros was in there. And Davis coming in as well, but Barry unable to find the quality with that left foot. Potent weapon down the years. That's Luke Moore looking to give Everton problems. He'll get there. It's a great effort. Well, terrific stuff from Luke Moore. Brought back into the side today. And he nearly proved David O'Leary spot on here. It was a terrific effort, but just unable to find the target as Martin came out on full alert. I mentioned Davis, part of that Youth Cup winning side. Luke Moore was also in that uh, Villa team. Which won 4-1 at Goodison Park in the first leg, losing 1-0 here. And the first uh, moment of difficulty for Mike Riley. You embarrass a little unhappy. This is Milner. 
Into Barros, it's a chance here. Well, it was a real opportunity for Barros, which he should have made much more of. His touch let him down at the crucial moment. possession and now seeing Villa create openings and Peter Kroldrup there found himself in real difficulty Harris just escaped him maybe he did just enough in the end he's forward by Neville Osman and he couldn't get there this is Osman again Beatty, what can he produce? Shooting chance. And Villa not too secure at the back at the moment at all. That's wild in the end from James McFadden. We certainly need Everton need to find some confidence with the Merseyside derby looming on the horizon, and certainly it looks as though James Beatty needs to find plenty of that at the moment. Good persistent play from the striker. Well, the body language is not good from McFadden there. And as BT put this cross in. I mean, it's great determination to win it. But... Uh, Wasn't quite to, going to fall for either of the Everton players attacking the penalty area there. And it's not good to see the recriminations from McFadden, particularly. This is Barros. Lovely link up play. More. Routine for Martin. But uh, showing good understanding there, the two front men. Good take from McFadden. BT. Better ball this time, maybe. Arteta usually is able to provide that. McFadden. Just couldn't quite meaningfully retrieve that. Stephen Davis. And you could see the idea. Ooh, and that was not pretty. Spiky challenge there from the Ulsterman. Mike Riley choosing to keep his cards in his pocket. I think he was a little frustrated with himself. Yobo away. This, this is Milner. Roldrup conceding the corner. It wasn't the most certain of clearances. Gives Aston Villa an opportunity here. Oh, that's bouncing awkwardly, and Barros trying the spectacular, which didn't pay off. But it was not at all defended well by Everton, you have to say. How many bodies does it evade before it reaches Barros? Spectacular but not profitable. They're taking their time over this, this is Barry. Oh, he's done beautifully there. Coldrip dealt with it. Hughes. McCann! Love to get a goal against his old club, wouldn't he, Gavin McCann? Opened up for a moment, but you can see that the 
golden opportunity there was just to shift it to his left for Milan Barros. One cap wonder under Sven Joran Eriksson, Gavin McCann when he was still a Sunderland player. He began his top flight career with Everton. Simon Davis penalised for the challenge on Stephen Davis. It's McCann to fly it forward. Away by Hibbert. Arteta. Villa swiftly winning it back again. Oh, and Neville was caught sleeping there. This is a chance here for Barros and Milner. Broldrup's block. Well, Phil Neville must be the most relieved man at Villa Park there. Crow trip in the right place at the right time, it was a good piece of defending. And to be fair, it had to be. Pumped in there by Milner. Looked like handball from Ridgewell there. Barry in towards Barros, that looked like handball as well. He's given it. Well, that is extraordinary. Aston Villa take the lead in hugely controversial fashion. Because it looked like there wasn't just one, but there were two handballs in there. Well, the face of David Moyes tells the story. There's a hint of an arm there from Ridgewell, you can see the appeals. But <laughs> don't think there was any doubt about that one. Well, maybe not there, but definitely there. And the support have responded, can the team? Off to Laney. Osman. Neville. It's not the worst ball in there. And so Mike Riley saw something he wasn't happy with. A challenge from Cahill. Well, the one thing that Everton have to avoid is letting that frustration get the better of them. But you can understand their feelings of anger, although Richard Wright doesn't seem too unhappy with life at the moment, to be honest. This is McFadden. Oh, oh, it released a little earlier there, the Everton bench. It's a match that was finely balanced. But it has taken a huge twist in the favour of Aston Villa. It's uh, always a psychological blow to concede, but to concede in that way... This is Beatty! Well, it really hasn't gone his way since he joined Everton. The goals haven't been flowing as everybody hoped. That was really a bit of a wild slash at it in the end. Delaney across. And maybe a chance for Everton before the interval, into the added period. Of two minutes. Asking for the ball, he looked to use Arteta and he didn't stick with the Spaniard. This is more. Hibbert having to race back. Funnel him into the corner, but it's still difficult to shackle more. He's 
shown enough to justify his recall to the side today. That's Hughes. And is that a foul? Well, no, but it's more pressure. Controversial non-decision by Mike Riley. Sees Aston Villa in front here. He failed to spot a clear handball by Milan Barros in the build-up to the opening goal ten minutes before half-time. We might argue it's a lead that Villa may be merited. David Moyes will not think so. Beatty had a couple of reasonable opportunities. And so did uh, Barros and Moore at the other end. Mike Riley hearing the protest from the Everton players but it's too late for that now, at half-time, it is Aston Villa 1, Everton 0. So Aston Villa and Milan Barros, who benefited from a hugely controversial decision ten minutes before half-time, get the second half underway, defending the one-goal lead and hoping to add to it. As Barros immediately involved. That about sums it up. Well, I'm sure they could hardly believe their good fortune when they took the lead. And then Everton could hardly avoid venting their fury. And Barros hoping to put Broad upon the pressure, he's not got time. And he looked distinctly uncomfortable there. Had plenty of time to get rid of that. I thought that uh, he might have had time to just let that one run, but couldn't. And it's catching. Yobo concedes another corner. Well, it's a bright start to the second half from Aston Villa here. And Neville choosing to pick up Barros this time. It's not the best of deliveries. And he's kept alive brilliantly, Milner. And behind by Tony Hibbert, but Aston Villa really do have their feet down hard on the accelerator here. Everton with plenty to think about. Oh, that's criminal defending, and Villa have doubled the lead, and it's Mark Delaney, of all people. It's only his second league goal for Aston Villa. Well, it was awful defending from Everton, but Delaney was alive to it and made it pay. It's an excellent finish. Well, you have to go back to August 1999 for his last league goal for Aston Villa, and he may well have put the game beyond Everton here with his second. Well, either side of half-time, Aston Villa have scored crucial goals, one controversial, which will have to be debated afterwards, I suppose, as a turning point in the game, but if Everton are going to defend corners like that and give opportunities like that away, then they are not going to win matches in the Premiership. Well, 
Everton now really do need something special. Where will it drop? It'll drop to Davis. Arsman. Davis. Not the worst effort in the world from Simon Davis, who player who has yet really to win over the Goodison fans. That one whistling comfortably wide in the end. But how is Delaney able to get in there unopposed? Eventually able to get it out of immediate danger. Barry to take over. Now it's Barros! And didn't get hold of the second effort. Well, Kroldrup, perhaps a little unwittingly in the way of that. Maybe that's harsh, but that's the sort of ball that they can get bent into the game from. It's a problem here for Luke Moore. Waiting a while for a chance. Everton didn't clear it sufficiently. Carved out by Barry. It's a good block by Kroldrup in the end. No, it doesn't look that bad. And by the same token, it doesn't look that good for Luke Moore. Moving with a great deal of determination and they're readying Juan Pablo Angel, so maybe it's uh, more a precautionary change. I think more though today has justified his selection. That's, uh, bent fighting for it. Where will it drop? Beatty! Good save. The first he's really had to make, Sorensen. Bent. In towards Cahill, I tell you what, that was a more than decent ball, but this was a more than decent chance for James Beattie. It's not quite that everything they've hit has turned to goals, Villa, but it's not far off that. Neville's ball, Bent's attacking, and again. sort of thing that could unlock the door. You have Beatty lurking. Beatty wasn't following in with the run there. So maybe feed off the knockdown. Angel, that's Cahill. Yeah, everybody hesitating and back at one out. Barros! Good effort and a good save. Relatively comfortable for Martin. But again, real hesitancy about Everton's defending and Kroldrup there with nothing more than a token effort. Davis. Now fall to Angel. 
And now Barry. Which way is he going to go? He'll use Angel. Barros. Lovely first time layoff. It's Barros again. Angel wants it, points the way, and finds the finish. Brilliant breakaway goal. And that really is it for Everton now. Well, it was a terrific move. Angel involved right at the start. Series of one-twos with Barros, he's definitely onside. And he was there at the finish, despite Martin's efforts. No way back for Everton. And it's three precious, precious points for Aston Villa. It's always a great pleasure for a manager when uh, a substitution pays off, and it certainly has for David O'Leary. Duncan Ferguson really didn't have a chance to uh, make his arrival pay before that third goal. Might hear, but not uh, in his area. Davis, bent, showing great determination, but he slipped it through here. It's Backer, it's Barros, it's four. Two goals in little more than a minute have finally killed off Everton. And Barros who started it all with a hugely controversial opener. Has added to the Everton agony here. For the second successive game, Everton concede four. And that was a lovely finish on the end of a excellent cross by Backer. And Everton were completely ripped apart. Two for Barros, the former Liverpool man, against Everton. That will make it an even more bitter pill to swallow. Well, amidst the celebrations, Aston Villa have made a change. They've brought Craig Gardner on for Stephen Davis. Well, it's a good job that it's not the Merseyside derby next. Oh, hang on. It doesn't get any easier for Everton. Liverpool at home, their next Premier League fixture. And much work to do in the admittedly short space of time before that. Arteta trying to find a crumb of consolation now when they were only a few moments ago looking for a road back into the match. In towards Ferguson, it's the first one he's really been able to attack, but didn't have much hope of getting on the end of it. Likely complaints about the first goal, which are perfectly legitimate. Their response to it has been... Well, simply not good enough. Thought maybe, admittedly, fragile confidence plays a part in it, but you thought they might come, up, come out seething with injustice put up a real fight to get back into the game they simply haven't done that and they're defending on the second goal you have to say it was simply not premiership standard in fact I'm not sure what standard it was really Villa certainly came out at the start of the second half like a side who were determined not to allow Everton any sort of foothold in the game believe the first half was a pretty even affair. Backer. Poor layoff from Barros. Doesn't matter. 
is McFadden. Paris hoping to atone here. And the support will love that display of commitment. They'll love his two goals today even more. And he makes it four for the season. Well, Everton's agony is brought to a close, but Aston Villa can enjoy an emphatic victory. On the receiving end last year against Everton here at Villa Park, our fortunes change. And while Everton will complain about the decision or non-decision in the first goal, clear handball by Barros, they can't complain after that because they simply didn't put up a fight. And Milan Barros will make the headlines partly for the wrong reasons, but also with two goals today. Mark Delaney with a rare one, only his second league goal in Villa Colours. And Juan Pablo Angel also on the score sheet. It is just what the doctor ordered for Aston Villa. Precisely the opposite for Everton.